Hey, g'day guys, it's Calvin from The Cartoon Company. I do a heap of 1UZ conversions, conversion related work and wiring. For today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about gearboxes. I did a video the other day about bell housings to cover the main gearboxes that we see here in New Zealand. And they are of course available around the world. But there are different variances a little bit and, and different parts that different guys have, av have available to them. As part of doing this particular Hilux we're doing at the moment, we've ended up with a, just a gearbox that was supplied in the back of the truck. We're going to have a chat about some gearboxes. It's not going to have all the information in it, but it's going to give you a pretty good idea of, of uh, what's out there. So the gearbox in question today, we're looking at is this, this gearbox here. So as you can see, well, we fitted up a 1UZ bell housing to it. So this is the 1UZ bell housing pattern. When the bell housing goes on, check your shaft, your spigot shaft, and it should be about five mils away from the bell housing surface. If we get a ruler, we'll just go past. There's another one here to talk about as well. But if we get a ruler, oh, sorry, a rule. We get a rule, and we place it across the front of the box. There's half a finger. So that's a legitimate uh, measurement, half a finger. And it is easy to get caught out on them. So we talk about this one being a 160 millimeter shaft. If I go over to this one, this is the 190 millimeter shaft box. So that one is a little bit of a rarity. I've only ever seen one of those, and it's it's that one. So this gearbox comes, um, this is an R151. Slightly different ratios to the R150. And the difference you'll find is where the shifters sit. So this one has the shifter for the gearbox, in the gearbox, plus the shifter for the transfer case in the gearbox. The transfer case, when the transfer case has got the shifter on a linkage system, this one happens to be, it's a VF2A, and it is a chain-driven transfer case. And it has the electronic engagement on the back. We'll talk about that in a moment. So this one is an R150. You'll see it has the shifter in the gearbox, but it's further back than the 151. So the transfer case, which is a VF1A, has the shifter in the transfer case itself. Again, this one is an electronic engagement. So the electronic engagement, uh, we see them in surfs and forerunners. People say they give a lot of trouble. They need to be pulled apart and checked. If they're pulled apart and checked, checked are sealed up, don't have water in them, the, the switches inside are working, they're actually quite a, quite a good unit. And lots of people throw them away because they can't make them work, you just pull them apart and clean them. So this same setup here, ooh, I'm gonna fall over, is available in later model Hiluxes without the transfer, uh, the oh, without the four by four engagement. And you'll also find it in some really, really early V6 surfs and in different markets. Um, some markets, they don't have that engagement, but that's what we mainly see in New Zealand. On this box, I've built up a new wiring loom to go into this particular job. Uh, so we have a reverse switch here. On the transfer case, we have two ports here. This one is for the 4x4 engagement, when it goes into 4x4. And sometimes they have this one, which is the neutral switch. To identify in the Toyota gearboxes, to see if it's a big box or a small box. So this being an R, I call it the big box. It has the drain plug pointing towards the chassis rail. We look down here, here's your drain plug. So there's the drain plug. So it's I say it's on the side, it's on the side at the bottom. 
or it runs uh, parallel with the ground. Instead of, if it was a small gearbox, it would be underneath here, running um, at right angles to the ground, or perpendicular to the ground. This again is, is a big box. So it's same same uh, position for the sump plug. The, the transfer cases also have different um, splines where they join onto the boxes. This one's out of a, an earlier Hilux or a Surf. Different to the Land Cruiser where they have an offset nugget on the transfer or the output is offset. This one, the, the main rear drive output is directly through the transfer. We've got a motor in the way that to have the other one there. And early vehicles coming to the right-hand side, so right-hand drive side drop. On the later ones, they went to the left-hand side drop. So make sure you get your transfer case going the correct way, because they do change as they get to the later ones. So here is another example of that same sort of setup on the later Hilux. This is a 185 surf, and you'll see this drop is coming on the uh, the left-hand side of the vehicle, passenger side for us Kiwis. So I'll just climb out, and that is a mistake that people make. They try to put the early box, or they buy an early box, and transfer to go in a later model truck. So we have climb out of here, as you can see. I've come out uh, the the, the left-hand side of the vehicle. So here's another version of that R-series gearbox. Again, depending where they come from and which ratios, they have different ratios in them. You'll see the drain plug on the side at the bottom again. So it's a big box, electronic speedo, and they do come with cable speedo, some of them. And reverse switch. This one, rear wheel drive, no transfer case. And they have this big, ugly lever. But it is perfect for using if you're doing a 1UZ and you want a cheaper box than an R154. This is a late Hilux gearbox. <coughs> so if I hold uh, this uh, rule across the front, you'll see I can fit my fingers in, bring the spigot shaft or the end of the input shaft. Uh, don't be caught out there. These have a short shaft gearbox. It's just in the factory vehicle. They've got a big thick flywheel and the spigot bearing is, is in the flywheel rather than in the back of the engine. If we have a look here, it's a 160 mil shaft. So that is a short shaft, but people get caught out because they try to put the R154 long shaft bell housing onto that gearbox. If you are changing from a G series or a W series, the small gearbox, you do need to change the yoke. They are a different size, so much bigger yoke on the R-series boxes. And again, if you're looking for an R154 yoke, late model Hilux will do the job, so it makes it quite easy to find yokes. Um, instead of asking, uh, instead of going for people who want absolute moonbeams for an R154 yoke, you can get a late Hilux, and that'll fit just fine. Interesting enough, it actually has a bolt pattern on the top of this, like for a high ace van. Very, very similar, as if you had a gearbox mount on the top of it. Haven't really noticed that before. Other switches on these boxes, is this one in here, is for the four-wheel drive light on the dash. And this one over here is like a four-wheel drive bypass, so that's when the shifter is moved into four-wheel drive. I often get asked, or I get told that you can't use this box because you can't control this transfer case. It was controlled in the factory vehicle it came out of, so why couldn't we do it in a conversion? We need to under, understand the system. So I actually prefer to use the little factory controller, four-wheel drive controller. The system is really pretty simple. There is a button on the knob you push the button 
and it will engage the four-wheel drive motor without moving the transfer case into low. If you move the shifter into low, the switch goes to the computer and it engages the motor, the four-wheel drive motor. So you can't have a low two-wheel drive if that switch is connected in the, in the factory system. If you unplug that switch, then you've got a low two-wheel drive because it won't engage the motor. If you're not running the front diff, so if you put this gearbox into a solid front end Hilux, you can still run the control unit. You just don't need to run the wires that go to the front diff and you can do a bit of bypassing. I'll do a video on that another day on how to wire that up because it's really, really simple to do. When you are fitting up these boxes, I do recommend replacing the output seal. Popping this cover off and replacing the input seal. They're readily available. Quite easy to get your hands on. In the transfer case, interesting enough, the these little adapter sleeves seem to handle quite well on the manual ones. I haven't seen many split. They're nice and thick. But on the autos, when we're going to do an auto job showing fitting up a transfer case onto a 1UZ auto very soon and they give trouble in that spline you also notice in, in our one we fitted up one of our internal release bearings that goes with the clutch that we use so we're not using fork at all i've been doing this for so long now i've had to fix lots of people with fork set up wrong so i've developed a system that works really well and we always use it. Gearbox mounts on the transfer. If you check out the video on this Hilux, you'll see that we've, there are different mounts. So it took us a little while to find it. So on the transfer cases, there are different mounting points depending which model they come out. So same transfer case, but different, if that makes sense. We have different mounting points and different bits and pieces on them. There will be different switches depending which model it goes into. So just be aware of that. So when I'm doing a Hilux conversion, like a four-wheel drive Hilux conversion, I pretty much always change from the small box to the big box. Hilux have a gear-driven transfer case, which is a really neat little transfer case. And with the use of an adapter, you can put them onto the back of these R-series gearboxes. But for most of the jobs that we do, that hasn't been necessary because they're going for road vehicles, they're not going for heavy four-wheel driving. And the chain-driven transfer case works just fine. Uh, good oil is really important when you're doing these gearboxes, so make sure you do, uh, don't skimp on the oil and put uh, good quality oil into them. If I'm doing a, a two-wheel drive Hilux, my weapon of choice for the gearbox is to take the, the G-series out and to put the bigger R-series in. And it's because they do run a different bell housing to the, between the G and the W. The GW is the same. Between the G-series W series gearbox and the R series gearbox, they have a different front bolt pattern. So you have to change the bell housing. So it's easier to do that swap at the time of conversion rather than saying, I'll do it later. Because you've got a different drive shaft, different yoke, uh, different bell housing, but the clutch is the same. Okay, so the clutch, the input splines on the Toyota gearboxes between the G, W, and the R is all the same. You've got the different shaft lengths, so just watch that between the uh, four-wheel drive R, though there is this one over here that has sometimes got the long shaft, and the R154, okay. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more information about uh, these gearboxes. So we're gonna have a full conversion video of this 2003 Hilux, including the fitment of this gearboxes into it, which is about to happen uh, right now. So I hope that was helpful and we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.